when they've learned their lesson, Trump literally <laughs> opened their eyes to see that if you want to be the good people that you're saying that you are, you actually have to reach out mm -hmm. to everybody, all okay. Americans. Yeah. Okay, now, do you, what role do you think race has played in all of this? Do you think even on the Trump administration, I mean, let's be honest here, do you think that has mm -hmm. kind of like emboldened um, people with, I mean, racist views? Have, they, have you seen people, I mean, what people were, like you said, what we were thinking, he was the one that had the nerve and the guts to say it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. racism has been, is part of American history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always going to be there, but we have to do the work to move ourselves beyond that into, you know, like a post-racial era. I don't really think we're there yeah. yet. During the time that Obama was president, people were saying, oh, maybe we are now, you know, in a post-racial era. But that really wasn't the case. It was like things were just kind of swept under the carpet. And when Trump came into power, why did he have to, you know, it's like people with racist views were now emboldened to come out and maybe to oppress others, you know, that really are not of the same race as they are, don't look like them, don't speak like them. You know, this issue about immigration was, you know, has, was a big deal. You know, why, how does that, you know, affect mm -hmm. you as young, you know, minorities in the um, Republican Party? What do you have to say about that? Well, first, I think, even addressing racism as Christians, one of the things we always talk about is racism is an evil. It's an evil like greed, like lust, like pride. Stealing. And it's, it's like theft, stealing. Mm -hmm. And those are evils that we will never be able to abolish. Why? Because they reside in the heart of men. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can never in our, in our logic, trying to maneuver life, always focus on abolishing those evils. I mean, the way evil will actually go away is when Jesus comes back, yes. right? Okay. So there's always gonna be evil, whether it be in a system, whether it be in the hospital, at the doctor's place, whatever. Now that's not to say that we don't address certain things, don't ignore the fact, you know, our, our neighbors or our sisters or our friends are different colors than us, but we know that there are certain issues that reside in certain races and what, what should we do? We should call them out. Right. One of the issues that the black community has with, with Trump is when he was talking particularly in the black community, he said, okay, just give me a try. What the heck do you have to That's, lose? Yeah, and everybody was so lose. upset. Oh my gosh, how could you say that? But no, black community, like we need to challenge ourselves and really ask that question, like black community, what is it that we have to lose, mm. right? Because if we really think about it and we look at the history of things and what we're actually fighting for, what we've been fighting for is what we're still fighting for. Mm -hmm. Right. So that means that something hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So why are we continuing in the same cycle to do the same things? Just as you said, insanity, you're, you're doing the same things, expecting different results. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you have somebody who came, who was saying, okay, let's bring, let's build this wall. And mind you, Trump is not the only person. Mm -hmm. He's not the only polit politician or, or presidential president. candidate who said, let's build this wall. Why? Because they know that when you build the wall, you put Americans first by providing more jobs and by securing this nation so that there's less crime and less sex trafficking being brought into this country. Yeah. He said, okay, let's, now we can provide more jobs for Americans, which means all Americans, white, black, Puerto Rican, whatever, all races, yeah, all right. minorities. Mm -hmm. We're talking about lowering crime. We're talking about being able to, um, Oh, past decades of time, lower the unemployment rate. Like there's just so much stuff that has happened. And even starting with the black family, you know, mm -hmm. bringing fathers home, fathers who were sent to jail for minor crimes um, and, and being released, you know, on the First Step Act, which, which brought home so many black men, black women. Mm -hmm. So when you want to talk about certain problems when it pertains to race, I mean, we have to be honest, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Yes. We're, we're, you know, so I think addressing things comes with, speaking blatantly about those issues and then getting to the root of those problems so that yes. those issues can be resolved. You know, for me, what I would say, she, she actually laid out uh, Trump policies with the black community, like the actual 
I mean, for the first time, an actual president who did something for the black community because we had a black president, but he never addressed. Okay, the, yeah. Can you tell me some of the things that he did for the black community? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I mentioned was the wall, and a lot of people will say that the wall is racist, but I he mean, didn't, think he about didn't, it. he didn't build the wall. No, he didn't. He he didn't build the wall, but he made sure that the wall was built. <laughs> like the, 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 wall, the, was, wall, the it, wall was never wall built. It's still built. not built. They it's had to. Built. The wall is being built. The, the wall, wall is, is being. They they had. They just had to make some repairs of the wall. They had some structure there, you know, before. And you know, those ones they had to reinforce. They reinforced those, and then just you know, extended some just a little bit but he has not the wall he said he's going to build that mexico is going to pay for it he still has not built that wall yet if that's what you're saying that promise no, that promise has not been fulfilled no i mean the wall is not completed but the process of the wall being built has started and it's has, in, has, in, yeah in, that, in, the process the process started but he didn't build the wall yet he the process has started but that wall that he said, a big, long, beautiful wall of, you know, how many miles or something, that wall still, you know, has not been, you know, built from, I mean, what he promised, you know, on that. He, he has not, he did not really deliver on that. But my thing is, how do you think that his administration, this is, you know, I mean, give us an honest answer. Do you think his administration actually is an administration that was very hostile to immigrants? And, um, and also, you know, to black people. And do you really think, I mean, don't you think that that was the case? Or do you think, oh, no, it really wasn't that way? What do you think about that? Like hostile in regards to what or how? Uh, oh, we talk about, you know, uh, police um, brutality. We talk about, you know, um, people just, I mean, black people, killing, the oppression, you know, of blacks. You know, all of that, you know, talk about, you know, immigration, separation of, of children from their parents at the border, you know, all of that. You can, we have to have, you know, I mean, compassion. Nobody is saying open, you know, the borders, but you, you can't, you know, treat people, you know, that way and separate. I mean, for me, I'm a mother. You know, you have to separate those, I mean, little children, you know, from their, from their parents just because, you know, they came in, I mean, to the country legally. I mean, what you can do if you, if you want to deport them, you deport them with their, with their kids. You don't, I mean, t separate the kids, you know, from their parents. That's very traumatic, you know, uh, for kids, you know, to have that separation. Maybe you guys cannot speak to that right now because both of you are still kind of young. You know, you've not really had, you know, I mean, kids of your own yet. It's good. That, one, that might be a difficult thing for you to address, but that, there was no, I mean, compassion, no, no matter what we do, especially as, you know, um, Christians, we also have to, you know, have compassion. Because if we say, okay, this, um, a lot of religious people are in the Republican Party. You can't, there are certain things that, okay, you can say, okay, even if I'm a Republican, this, you will say, no, this is like going too far. We really can't do this. We have to have compassion because that's why we're Christians. If you look at the Bible, it says, and Christ had compassion, you know, on them and then love. But it was not, I mean, in, in terms of love, all of a sudden, everybody start like, I mean, hating their neighbors. I mean, just, I mean, there was so much polarization, the division, the hate. That is not something, you know, that you will even want to entertain in our community, let alone to allow that seed, you know, to take root, you know, in our community. So for you, as young people, being that kind of like, is that not a turn off, you know, for you and also as believers? So what I was, I, I'm going to say, Mrs. Glory, <laughs> that everything you just laid out right now, how do you know about it through the media, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I, I read. It's not through the media. I don't go. I look at the policies. You know, everything. Mm -hmm. That was his, uh, that was the, the policy. Is I mean, zero tolerance policy. You know, mm -hmm. immigration policies. This is not, I don't listen to the media to get my news. I get the facts. Because that is how I can also, you know, educate myself and make mm -hmm. you know informed decisions as well as you know educate others i can't okay. take that you know from you know the media somebody like you know obama he mm -hmm. i mean he i mean deported people that came in illegally mm -hmm. yeah but there was he did it in a way that in a very compassionate way 
Mm. You understand what okay, I'm so saying? That's where, that's where we say that we disagree. And no, the reason- because no, he did. He deported a lot of people. In fact, some people, you know, call him, you know, a deporter in chief and everything. There was a lot of deportation. Mm-hmm. Of, yeah, people, yes, he did. It's not he. It's not only you know, um, and Trump. So mm-hmm. don't you know. I if you look at, I'm talking about policies right now. We're not mm-hmm. talking about what the media says or you know anything. Else. No, when you have a policy like that, it has to be like I mean, humane policy. You just can't. I mean, have policies that are so inhumane. By all means, every sovereign nation have the right to secure its borders. We know that. Yeah. You know, so, that is not that is not the issue. Is how do you do this? You know, one legally and also in a compassionate you know manner. Yeah. Those kids, six hundred and something of them, have. I mean, they can't even locate their parents. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Yeah. So, I mean, what I would say first and foremost, obviously, it's 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 hurtful for any child to be separated from their parents. You know, and I I don't have children of my own, but. I've had experience working with children and it would just be painful for any of their parents or the children to come to me and say, Mm -hmm. I can't find my parents or for the parents to say, I can't find my children. Um, But in this case with immigration policies, Mm -hmm. what's happened is uh, Border Control actually did some DNA testing on the parents that were, or the families that were brought in from the border. Mm -hmm. And what they found to be is that a high percentage of the children that were brought in by the parents were not biologically related really to true. them at all. And so what was happening is those children were being brought over for sex trafficking mm-hmm. and for drug trafficking purposes. So I, in the election, I don't know if you, I don't know if you watched the last election, but what Trump was mentioning about children being brought in by coyotes. Coyotes I mean, and everybody thought it was <laughs> those, animals. Those, 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 no, yes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix, you know, it, they're all in the mix. It's just not like, oh, all of them are being brought in by coyotes. No, not all of mm-hmm. them. Some not are, often, some, were, some were coming there, percent, and yeah. some were actually, you know, coming, you know, with their parents, you know, and, you know, fleeing. I mean, whatever it is, you know, the inhumane activities that were taking place in their country, the oppression and everything in their countries, yes. But my thing is, you know why that touched a lot of people? Is if you want to do something, policies, our policies should be, this is something that we speak against in other countries, that America is really against, you know, so we can't be the ones who are now perpetrating, you know, this type of, I mean, inhumane activities. To me, I think that is another thing that was a big turn off to a lot of people, the lack of empathy, the lack of compassion. I mean, for, at this point, to have uh, five million people who voted, you know, against him and for Joe Biden. There's something that made those people say, no, we've had enough of this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if we, if, if we, so if we're talking about media bias, let us also look at our own biases. There are certain things that um, maybe your party would stand for that you say, you know what, I, I know you know, this is my party, I belong to this party, but this is, I, this one, I do not agree with this. This, I think is wrong. Mm-hmm. This, I think is inhumane. So that is really, yeah. you know, my, my thing. You know, number one is just, you know, the racism, the lack of, you know, empathy, the lack of compassion. And as individuals, we also have to think about, you know, putting ourselves, you know, in the shoes of others and also show love and compassion, especially when we now start talking about, you now go further and say, you know, as Christians, that is, you know, something that, oh my gosh, is, if we, we can have policies, we can have debate. I like this debate that we are having. It's a civil, mm-hmm. you know, debate, but that's not where the country has been for the past four years. The country has been so right. polarized, you know, and so divided that, it's difficult mm. for us to have this type of civil conversation. Yeah. If you allow me um, yes. to add, because I like what you said, that we should not be, um, uh, we should be honest within ourselves even, that if we support a party and then we see that there's something specific uh, in that party that we don't agree with, we have to speak up for that. And 
this is what I'm going to say to, to that specifically. I would come out and say that I don't agree with it as long as I know for sure that I have seen with my own eyes that this is what's going on, but not just because the media is actually putting out there and making it look that way. Honestly, uh, Mrs. Glory, I, I don't think people understand the power that the media has in this country because you said you read the policies and you just by reading the policies, you didn't feel the humanity compassion. or the compassion, okay? So then it's one thing to read his policies, but it's another to see how he himself he implements those policies. Because to be honest, nobody knows the man. We think we know the man. We think we know him personally. We say that he's racist or people say that he's racist because the media is showing us that he's racist. But none of us can claim how loud? No, but actions speak, action speak louder than words. I know that. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Action speaks, but if you're there and you're seeing him doing those actions, it's different than when people when somebody else is telling you the action that he did. I don't know if you understand that. But no, I do. I do understand. For me, at this point, at the difference that I'm putting, yeah, the difference that I'm putting is it's one thing to see a person act a certain way versus someone else telling you what the person did. So the action, it's still the action. You will still be able to see the action, but you didn't see it from the person himself. You heard it and you saw it from Sam personally, because for me, it's like, as long as I, have, I haven't seen with my own eyes that he actually or blatantly saying racist thing, that he hates black, that he hates immigrant. I mean, I've heard him say, I like immigrant coming here because as a businessman, I know that it's beneficial for our country. I, I don't I mind. Have, I have to tell you, I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you right now that he, I mean, for a fact called Nigerians, mm -hmm. I mean, Nigeria as whole country. I don't want all to. All African know. Okay. Yes. But, but, but is, it Gloria, is, it, is it false? Is it false? Is it false? Is, is it true or false? Oh, we no, have to but, be honest. And and no, no, but, no, 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 but, but wait, wait, wait. There has to be, when you are occupying that office, you know, as a president, there has to be a certain level of decorum that needs to be maintained as a leader. Just because I can say something does not mean I should say it. Even if you say, even if you know that it's true, you're not going to now, you know, call those countries, you know, as whole countries, just because, you know, you think, oh, they are not, you know, I mean, as prosperous as other countries or they are, you know, those could, no, those are, I mean, developing countries. Those are not as whole countries. Don't forget, if you look at, I mean, Africans that are, here in the United States, at least I know that, especially, let me actually speak for Nigerians. They are mm -hmm. one of the most educated um, group of um, minorities living in the United States. And, you know, even mm -hmm. if, granted, it's just because they have, I mean, they have bad leaders in Nigeria. It's because of, you know, mm -hmm. poor leadership. That is why, mm -hmm. so just, yeah, people. that's why, yeah. So, but. And so why not think that he was actually addressing the leaders of this country, just like he is the leader of this country? Because one thing that he has always said, I was elected by the American people. I have to work for the American people. So for me, it's like, if he's the president and he's saying things like, for me, I see it as he's addressing the leaders, the African leader, which is true because of our African leaders are making our countries holes. I mean, sorry, as <laughs> holes. And ourselves African, we say those things about our country, ourselves yeah. Africans. So in that, I saw it, I saw it as hypocrisy when people get upset that he said a truth. Like, why can he say it? And then why can't he say it? And then we could say, we it, could say it about our country. If countries. it's the truth. You know, but for me, I saw it that he was addressing it to the leaders. And I would like someone to actually address our leaders and tell them the truth in the, in their eyes that you guys are not taking care of your people. That's why we have as old countries. So that's how I saw that uh, episode. I didn't think that he was insulting the people of those countries. He was talking to the leaders of those countries. And, you know, I just, if I can just add, 
one of the things that we learn most importantly when it comes to voting is it's not about the personality. <laughs> It's about the policies. Well, I've, I've, he I've heard that a lot you know, from Republicans because, because they, they know can... that his his personality is um, is so. Um, it's not the best. It's, it's not the best. It's not, it's not. No, 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 no. That is that's that's an understatement. It's <laughs> you know, it's appalling. Number one, and it's so corrosive to you know democracy and I mean people working together. That oh my gosh. You say it's not the best. That is an understatement, but it's a person. But here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. The thing with personality is that personality it's, it's does not re get it's you repulsive. And but personality does not get you results. And this is what I'll say. For example, we look at our past presidents. We look at, for example, I'll just say Obama. He was the most because loved. he was very he was very charismatic, wonderful Eloquent. personality, very personable. But when we actually reflect back on what he did for the problems that we are still dealing with today, the reason why we're outside protesting, the reason why people are outside doing Black Lives Matter, while Obama was president for eight years, he didn't do anything about that. Yeah. So when you talk about somebody mm -hmm. who has a good personality, it doesn't matter. His personality didn't give us any it didn't results. Give it exactly. We okay, so, results. so he. His personality did not affect your vote. That's why you still went out and voted for him, right? And you know what? And I also think about it like this because I'm Nigerian, right? I'm Nigerian. She's she's from Congo. Mm -hmm. I look at my father and I look at how he raised me, and Thank his personality you. was not very personable. Yes. And I think a lot of Nigerians can agree with me in saying, a you lot know, of maybe our parents were a lot more harsher. You know, they said things and they said it very, very straightforward, harshly. very the way just how it just says it as it is and and look at us how we are like look at and most of us just as you said many nigerians in america like we're very successful we're very educated we're very brilliant in, in those realms why because look at how our parents raised, raised us no tough. no bs no none of the sugar coated but, and they were not that is cultural yeah. part of that is cultural but well, i don't i don't think i don't think culture has an effect on results oh, in that in that yeah, sense so, like yeah. Okay, no, 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 you, you know you know what, no, that actually, because here, if, I mean, somebody, they don't give the, the kid any choice. You gotta go to school. I mean, they will tell you, your parents will threaten you, even if they have to break your head open and put the book in it, you gotta mm -hmm. go to school. They don't give you that option and that choice. But here, you can't tell a child that. And then, you know, if they say, okay, after high school, you know, they are gonna start doing something else, they don't, they don't want to further their education, that the parents, once it turns I me mean, 18, so the parents are like, okay, if you don't want to go to college, that's fine. But for African culture, they don't believe, you know, that you mm -hmm. outgrow that, you know? I mean, they will beat you down, even if you are 20, I mean, 25 year old, or you, I mean, 25 <laughs> years old. No, it's true, but they don't give you that choice. They say, you're going to school, whether you like it or not, you're going to school. If you like, you're kicking and screaming, you're going to school. So that is part of, you know, the culture. And also the kids, the children don't see it as, okay, gosh, you know, I'm so traumatized, emotionally traumatized, so they're not gonna do well. So even if the parents tell them that, they even, they see it as, you know, okay, it's just, I mean, it's part of the culture, they're gonna go to school. And then they, they, they don't let that actually, you know, affect, you know, how they reason, how they think, how they interact with others. You know, they don't think that is, um, a lot of people don't see it as, okay, that is abusive or anything. They are like, okay, they still go, you know, pass and then get, you know, the education and become successful. But the culture is different here. Yeah, but the, we're talking about results. Mrs. Results. No, that is what leads to results. That's the reason why most, you know, Africans are educated, especially, you know, Nigerians. And also that is the reason why people here, they're like, okay. And they have the choice of not furthering their education. And the parents really can't do anything about that when they get to certain, you know, age. So you have to also factor that in. Yes, thank you so much, um, Peju and Deborah. It's really been a pleasure, you know, having you, yeah, on and also for, I mean, sharing your views, you know, with um, our viewers and also, yeah, um, your time, you know, as well. Thank you so much, and we really do appreciate it. And please do come back next time. Um, so I'm sure our viewers will have a lot of questions for you, you know, as well. And thank you for coming. And um, until, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And um, until, you know, I see you next time, I want to say thank you so much.
<laughs> thank you and uh, thank you Deborah for coming as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.